A guy named uh, Get Comfortable, I guess as he calls himself, 19 hours ago, he said, there's thousands of transitional fossils. What do you think a transitional fossil means? And somebody named N5KDA said, show us one. Get Comfortable said, Tiktaalik. Tiktaalik, that's how they pronounce it. Tiktaalik, well, that was easy. Any other questions? And NK, N5KDA wrote back, looks like a salamander to me. So what is Tiktaalik? This is their favorite new transitional fossil. Here it is, right here. Somebody found this in the dirt and dug it out and put it together and said, wow, we have proof for evolution. False. Fish paleontologist Neil Shubin and his partner Edward discovered Tiktaalik on Ellesmere Island in Nunavut, Canada. And fossils aren't bones found in the dirt. They are permineralized concretions that used to be bone, and they are found within a rock matrix. Hmm. Researchers have discovered well-preserved pelvis and partial pelvic fin. Oh, it was a fish type. It had a fin on it. From Tiktaalik, Rosia, a 375 million year old transitional species. So you got to look underneath to find the date when it was stamped, you know, 375 million BC. Okay. Uh, <clears throat> it's a transitional species between fish and the first legged animals. Hold it. You found a bone in the dirt, and you can prove that's a transitional between fish and animals on land. Um, it's a water dog. It's, who knows, but which reveals that the evolution of hind legs actually began as enhanced fins. So the, fin, the fins on this thing slowly turned into legs. All you have to do is imagine. Later, we found parts of other specimens, and some of these were really big, up to nine feet long. The local Inuit people named our fossil Tiktaalik, which means large freshwater fish. And as we took stock of our discovery, the real excitement began. Here was an animal Darwin had predicted, a real anatomical mixture. It had some features of fish, like scales and fins and gills. It also had lungs for breathing air. And to our astonishment, it had a neck, the earliest one like ours ever found. But inside the fins lie the clincher. We see an early version of Owen's one bone, two bones, lots of bones pattern that we see in our own limbs today. It even had a kind of wrist, the first signs of a link to the human hand. Every time you flex your wrist or shake your head, you can thank Tiktaalik and its Devonian cousins adapting to life in these ancient streams. Tiktaalik is a monospecific genus of an extinct critter the lobe-finned fish, okay? Well, if this wasn't your first time reading your PowerPoint, you would know that it's pronounced Sarcopterygian. Having many features akin to those of tetrapods. Tetra means four, uh, or, uh, on land, uh, four, four, cre four footed creatures on land. Oh, so this fi these fins were turning into legs. And you can tell that from the bones you found in the dirt. You just have to imagine. I mean, it's really that simple. Just imagine all these critters, they have to be related. Yeah using the tools of evolutionary biology, using the tools of stratigraphy, using the tools of geology, this is the flat-headed fish. This is Steve's specimen that was removed from that hull. Flat head, eyes on top, has a neck. You can see the head is separated from the shoulder. It has fins with fin rays and has scales in its back. Like a fish, it has scales and fins. Like an early limbed animal, it has a flat head with eyes on top, has a neck. And indeed, when we crack open the fin, what did we find? Bones that correspond to the upper arm, form even parts of a wrist. This is a real mix of characteristics found at the right part of the, of the, of the fossil record. So this creature we call Tiktaalik, Tiktaalik rosea, and you can see here what's sort of salient about it. It has a mix of tetrapod and fish characteristics. Like a lobe fin fish, it has fins, scales, and primitive jaws. Like an early uh, tetrapod, it has a neck, a wrist, flatheads, uh, flathead, and so forth. So here's a creature with lungs and gills. Here's a creature with limbs that have you know, limb bones in them, but also fin bones as well, fin rays. It's a real uh, mix between fish and tetrapod. And when we put it in the phylogenetic analysis, the evolutionary tree, you can see Tiktaalik right, drawn right in the middle here, it really shows a fine sequence of the emergence of tetrapod characteristics 
throughout the Devonian. So what's the take-home message here? The take-home message here is we can, we can predict likely and unlikely places to find fossils. We can, through doing that, learn about the great transitions in the history of life. The only specimen blocks containing the front portion of only specimen blocks containing the front portion of Tiktaalik, however, have been described. As the researchers investigated additional blocks recovered from their expeditions to the dig site in northern Canada, they discovered the rear portion. Oh, they found the rear axle of the Tiktaalik. The fossils included the complete pelvis, whoa, of the original type specimen, making it possible to directly compare the front and rear appendages. Now we can look at the front fins and the back fins. The scientists were immediately struck by the pelvis. Hope it didn't hurt them too bad. <laughs> uh, which was comparable to those of some early tetrapods. Oh, so the pelvis of the fish is comparable to a tetrapod. This is an amazing, amazing pelvis particularly at the hip socket. Now you gotta understand, these guys who are doing this research and finding these things, this is how they get paid. They have to make it look important. If you spend all your time digging in the dirt, finding a bone, you would want people to think what you're doing is important. Our dog used to do the same thing and we didn't pay him anything. This is brand new research, send more money. We'll do another dig on, out there. If you want to donate any amount, over 10 bucks, you can get one of our super duper Dinosaur Adventureland t-shirts with the patch on it. Just imagine. Yep, you can tell the fins are turning into legs. Tiktaalik was a combination of primitive and advanced features. Here, not only were the features distinct, but they suggest an advanced function. Whoa, look at that hip socket. That suggests he's learning to walk. Wow, I, know. I, I never would have thought of that. They appear to have used the fin in a way that's more suggestive of the way a limb gets used. So by the hip socket, it looks like their limb was used, their fin was used the way an animal uses his arm or leg. Well, that's proof. Who couldn't see that? Um, Talking incredulously about something isn't an argument, by the way. That's something you do a lot. Just right. being incredulous S is not an argument. It just... It's not anything. So, so they share, and it, 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 it shares, oh, and it shares both. All you have to do is imagine, see, the whale and the humans and the lizards and the birds are all related to a common ancestor. Textbooks say, the Devonian period is when the lobe-finned fish slowly evolved out of the water and decided to walk on land. Okay. 325 million years old. This is lie number four in my videotape, lies in the textbooks. If you don't have those, get that one for anybody going to public school or get the, that as part of the series, um, whoa, the whole creation series uh, um, on 50, 18 hours for uh, 50 bucks. Okay. This is how they get paid. They have to make it look important. The lobe fin fish is not 325 million year old fossil. It's still alive today. They're swimming around the Indian Ocean. They catch them all over Madagascar. I mean, they're huge fish, but they do have a little arm before the fin. The, how can they be a transitional f uh, fossil? They're still alive. Lobe fin fish are still swimming around. They're not a transitional fossil of anything. They certainly couldn't be an index fossil of anything. If they're still around, they could live in any layer. Charles Darwin came up with the term. It's sort of dumb in a way, because if it's alive, it can't be a fossil. But what it means is there's an early fossil record, then a total gap, and then there happens to be a living one. It doesn't mean that hundreds and hundreds of its relatives haven't become extinct. One of the things I love about the coelacanth is that it's seen history past. The bony fishes evolved into all these other ones. There's a coelacanth and the tetrapods, the four-footed creatures. Oh, so a cow and a fish are related. That, I'm not making this up, folks. That's what they're teaching. But since apparently that's how you get government grants, <clears throat> I want to show you research I've been doing for decades without any government help at all. Except the money I stole from the government by tax evasion. Ovent. I've been able to reconstruct the evolution of silverware. This took a lot of work because the fragments were very, it was busted up bad after the truck ran over it. I discovered that there's a whole variety of spoons out there. Now this one is slightly bigger, suggesting that it had a different, slightly different use. It was slowly evolving into a ladle or something. I'm not sure about that. I got more research on that one. This shows mass extinctions and millions of years of natural selection caused the evolution, causing evolution to produce a new species. I knew I had the right order. 
knife spoon erosion. Slowly cut grooves in the end and turned it into the short tine fork and then the long tine fork. This probably took about 17.24 million years and three weeks, okay? But I, I felt like I had a missing link. I was looking for it and, and studying and digging all over, the, looking for the, I, and the stewardess came by and handed it to me. Back in 1995, stewardess on U.S. Air handed me the spork. I couldn't believe it. Now, this was a three-tine spork. Later, I went to Popeye's Fried Chicken and found a four-tine four spork. <laughs> yeah. So now my evolution of silverware is becoming very complete. By the way, Moses, if you take a fork and you break off one of the tines, do you know what you call it? A threek. <laughs> if you break another one off, it's a took, And then a wonk, and then a throw it away. Okay? Ha-ha! <laughs> uh, now, many mutants did not survive over the years, okay? That's just too bad for them. It's survival of the fittest, you know? If you don't make it tough, okay? Now, many people, when they found out I was doing research on this, started sending me their finds. They knew I was looking for the fork evolution. They were hoping to become famous and get a fortune by helping me with my research. Many frauds, such as this obvious fork head on a spoon handle, I mean, anybody can see that, have been submitted as evidence, and this is a cutthroat business. This finding fossils is cutthroat, because there's only so many government grants, you know. Now, my highly trained scientific eye picked it up right away. I said, that is a, that is a fraud. That is, that's a fake. Anyway, environmental uh, pressures cause diverse species to evolve into superior and inferior races also. So we have the superior races of forks. Just another weird white supremacist reference for Kent Hovind, but what else is new? So I guess in his weird straw man argument here where he knows that forks don't reproduce, he has to replace selective pressures with erosion? I'm not exactly sure what his point is. I guess if you show a sequence where you have a spoon and then a spork and a fork, the spork is supposed to be transitional because it has the features of a spoon, but then it has the tines of a fork. Isn't that the entire point you're trying to disprove right now? Also, your highly trained scientific eye, where did you develop that? At Patriot Bible College? So let me point out the obvious about tectolic, okay? It's dead. You can't prove it had any offspring. You sure can't prove it had different offspring. No animal today can produce anything other than its kind. It said it had many, having many features akin to those of tetrapods. That doesn't prove anything. Don't the Hondas have many features akin to the Toyotas and the Chevys and the, uh, does that prove they're related? No, it's a good design. It works, okay? No animals today can produce anything other than their kind, and arranging fossils in some sort of order that you imagine is not proof of anything. I'm going to try and go through this as quickly as possible. We don't have to prove a single specimen had any offspring. Evolution is about population genetics. Having features of fish and tetrapods literally does prove it's transitional. You've never defined what the word kind means, so I don't care. The order is not imaginary. Neil Shubin knew exactly which strata to look for his transition in. That's proof the model is accurate. The rest of this video is just a Bible study, so I'm going to end it here. I know this video is kind of old, but I've been wanting to tackle this one for a while because Hoven's narcissistic display of the Dunning-Kruger effect is supremely annoying. I also just find Tiktaalik to be really fascinating. Seeing Neil Shubin get so excited talking about his fossil, it's like a breath of fresh air compared to Kent Hoven's incredulity. But either way, I hope you liked this video, so if you did, smash that like button, and I hope you have a nice day.